Namaste.
the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Today I inform you with much sadness about the passing of a much-loved chorister of ours by name of Christopher Tobias. He experienced a heart attack earlier this week, and we heard this morning at 5 he passed on, and we hold his wife Shannon and family in prayer, and also we extend our condolences to the choir family with whom Chris has served and sung for so many years, so there's a rich record of memory and we also hold them in prayer as they bring their voices in this time of sadness to join and to lead us in song. Also, we embrace the Hrupa family as they grieve the passing of the sister of Father Carl and Johan Hrupa, um, his only sister by name of Mary Ann, who was working for the World Health Organization. And she was based in Pretoria, and she passed on in the course of this week. So we are quite grief-laden, and we pray that this time of gathering will also sustain Shannon and the family, and also the Hrupa family in their time of bereavement. Uh, we will now sing the first hymn. Sorry, friends. We will not sing the first hymn because there isn't a first hymn, and I know that's by my decision. And so please join me as we say, Praise the Lord. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Glory to God in the highest. the College for Purity, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, 
cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. The psalm this morning, we are reminded that blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. And blessed are those who the Lord imputes no blame and in whose spirit there is no guile. In the second reading in 1 Corinthians, Paul uses the metaphor of an athlete as an example of how the Christians should approach life. And we are reminded that in a race the runners all compete, but only one receives a prize. And we are encouraged that we must run, that we may win, and we must apply ourselves with vigor and not allow ourselves to be defeated by the challenges that come our way, but when it does, that we resolve again to rise where we have fallen. And we do so by the grace that comes with confession, because the more we sin, the more we are forgiven, and the more we are under the cloud of grace. And so we confess our sins as we pray. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, in penitence we confess that we have sinned against you through our own fault, in thought, word, and deed, and in what we have left undone. For the sake of your Son, Christ our Lord, forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. And so, Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy on you, pardon your sins, and set you free from them, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And so we pray the colic for this day. God our Father, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as pass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you that we, loving you above all things, may obtain your promises which exceed all that we can desire through Jesus Christ our Lord who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated for the first reading that is co-read by brother and sister Hannah and Connor. A reading from Kings. Norman, commander of the army of the king, and in high favor with his master. Because, of, because by him the Lord had given victory to Aram. The man, though a mighty warrior, suffered from leprosy. Now the Aramians, on one of their raids, had taken a young girl captive from the land of Israel and she served Norman's wife. She said to her mistress, 
If only my Lord were with the prophet who is in Samaria, he would cure him of his leprosy. So Naaman went in and told his Lord just what the girl from the land of Israel had said. And the king of Aram said, Go then, and I will send along a letter to the king of Israel. He went, taking with him ten talents of silver, six thousand shackles of gold, and ten sets of garments. He brought the letter to the king of Israel, which read, When this letter reaches you, know that I have sent to you my servant, Naaman, that you may cure him of his leprosy. When the king of Israel read the letter, he tore his clothes and said, Am I God to give death or life, that this man sends word to me to cure a man of his leprosy? Just look and see how he's trying to pick a quarrel with me. But when Elisha, the man of God, heard that the king of Israel had torn his clothes, he sent a message to the king. Why have you torn your clothes? Let him come to me that he may learn that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and chariots and halted at the entrance of Elisha's house. Elisha sent a messenger to him saying, go wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored and you shall be clean. But Naaman became angry and went away saying, I thought that for me he would surely come out and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God, and would wave his hand over the spot and cure the leprosy. Are not Abana and Farpar, the rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters in Israel? Could I not wash them and be clean? He turned and went away in a rage, but his servants approached him and said to him, Father, if the prophet had commanded you to do something difficult, would you not have done it? How much more when all he said to you was, wash and be clean. So he went down and immersed himself seven times in the Jordan, according to the word of the man of God. His flesh was restored like the flesh of a young boy, and he was clean.
Friends, I invite you to remain standing and just for your information, in the Sundays to come, we will only do one of the two readings uh, for brevity of time and also uh, just to enable us to, to save a bit on our cost. I invite you to read the second reading at your leisure wherever you are and when you vacate this premises. But for now, we will sing the gradual. Thine arm, O Lord, in days of old. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Listen to the good news proclaimed in the Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 1, beginning at the 40th verse. Jesus cleansed a leper. A leper came to him, begging him and kneeling. He said to him, if you choose, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, Jesus stretched out his hand and touched him and said to him, I do choose, be made clean. Immediately the leprosy left him and he was made clean. After sternly warning him, he sent him away at once, saying to him, See that you say nothing to anyone, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses commanded as a testimony to them. But he went out and began to proclaim it freely and to spread the word so that Jesus could no longer go into a town openly, but stayed out in the country and people came to him from every quarter. This is the Gospel of Christ. Friends, please be seated. Our guest preacher today is the Reverend Dr. Walter Brown, Brownridge. 
um, who is in the process of relocating from a parish in the USA uh, to take up a very vital ministry, I think in Toronto, and he had very generously accepted my invitation to preach this morning. He kindly provided an audio visual clip, and if we had our full array of marvelous equipment, which we hope to have soon, uh, we would have been able to see uh, a, a great virtual image of our brother, but we will now have to be satisfied with the audio clip, so I pray that it will be as loud and as warm as we know Walter to be. May I speak in the name of our ever-living, ever-loving, and ever-leading God. Amen. A radical compassion. Moeni, Huyamor, hello. Beloved of St. George the Martyr, Cathedral of Cape Town. It has been 15 years that all four of us, myself, Tina, Alec, and Martin, who are now 30 and 25 grown men living in their own in separate cities, that all four of us were with you. In fact, our family has grown by one. As you may remember, we adopted while we were there in South Africa what's known as, of course, a township brock, an Alsatian Ridgeback Bix from the streets of Cape Town. We adopted her as a pup, named her Misty. Sometimes we might even say Mistafa. She is still with us after six moves and is now nearly 17 years old. Quite an old girl, but still beautiful. And even though I've had the chance, after we left South Africa in 2006 and was on a seminary faculty in Sewanee, Tennessee, to get back for several years, it has been, in fact, 10 years, too long, since I have been with you. And now this pandemic keeps us even more separate as we pray for each other. And remember this, know this. Since the day we left South Africa in July of 2006 after serving on your cathedral staff for three years, not a day has gone by that we have not prayed for you, that we have not thought of you. Your love, your joy, your support for us. We give thanks to God for the memories of so many, and sadly, so many who have even gone on to glory on the other side of life. I can't name them all, but most particularly the beloved Dean Rowan Q. Smith whom the last time I saw Rowan was when I was dean of the cathedral in Honolulu, Hawaii, and he spent a month as our theologian in residence. So much has happened in our lives since then. For me, of course, a theological college faculty and then a cathedral dean and parish ministry for a few years while I took care of my father, who has died at 96. And now, starting just next week, as we leave Michigan to go to Vermont, where I will be the canon to the ordinary to the Bishop of Vermont, an exciting diocese in our New England area of United States with 44 feisty congregations. It is an exciting call as in the United States context of canon to the ordinary serves as, if you will, the chief of staff to the Bishop. And it is my joy that the Bishop I will be serving the Right Reverend Shannon McVeigh Brown is one of these amazing 
African-American women bishops that have been elected in the last few years, we now total six living African-American bishops, five of whom are diocesan or ordinaries. I follow the news in South Africa constantly, and I know the challenges you're having with COVID-19 and the strains that have been developed there. So please know that we will continue to pray for you as you pray for us. And I certainly hope that after this pandemic ends, that I will get back to South Africa this year and see you face to face. Well, that's all the time I have for catching up. I need to share the gospel with you. You know, one of the things that I take away from my time there is the tradition you had in August of each year for the month of compassion. To set aside a month, if you will, in the midst of ordinary time to really recall, to remind the church of its true calling, the compassion of Jesus, to reach out to the least and the lost, to reflect God's true glory. And that, of course, is the theme that we heard in the gospel today of Jesus healing the leper. It picks up on the theme last Sunday of Jesus healing all the sick who came to them, starting with Simon Peter's mother-in-law and people coming into town and surrounding the house and Jesus needing to get away to go to a deserted place, to go to the margins, to what we would say in the United States, the boondocks, those liminal spaces that sometimes are dangerous and frightening, and yet we go because that is where we are called to leave our comfort and security. And maybe something happens to Jesus there because when his disciples find him, he says, we need to go out to the other surrounding towns and villages away from our comfort zone area. And it is there that Jesus shows another type of compassion to this leper. And in fact, in showing it in a way that is so unique, Jesus doesn't even need to touch the leper. The leper believes that if Jesus would just say the word, he would be healed. And Jesus says, I do. Go and be healed. And then Jesus tells him, obey the law and go see the priests. Go see the rabbis. Because the theme of this reading at this point, of course, is Jesus encountering the purity codes that said that lepers were social outcasts, impure. And in fact, Jesus coming in contact with a leper as he did would make him impure. But Jesus doesn't care about that. For Jesus, the priority is compassion. That glorious gift. It's a radical compassion because it's not the traditional and understanding I'm going to be good to those who are good to me. I'm going to be loving and kind to those who are my kith and kin. Oh no, brothers and sisters, Jesus is showing a radical compassion to all. You see, it's rooted in Jesus' identity. This is still early in Mark's gospel, right? Jesus has been reflecting not only on his call and mission, but it's rooted in the beginning in his baptism, where in the River Jordan his cousin John pours water over him and the heavens open up and doves appear and what happens the voice of God says this is my beloved my beloved in whom I am well pleased beloved of St. George the martyr know that when we were baptized each and every one of us whenever you do baptisms God's voice still proclaims this is my beloved you and you and you and everyone who is baptized is God's beloved. That is the important gift of our faith. And the problem, the problem is twofold. Number one, some folks are not treated as if they are God's beloved. This is true in my country as in yours. Also, some folks 
Don't believe that others are God's beloved. They may think it about themselves, but they would say, Walter, what are you talking about? I, I don't think so-and-so is God's beloved. We have a nation here in the United States that is bitterly divided politically, as you saw from 6 January. We'd be, we would be hard pressed to say if one side or the other would recognize God's belovedness. And, and, and don't get me wrong, I, I, I'm very clearly on the side of democracy and truth against the racism and white Christian nationalism the lies that we had to deal with for the past four years. I'm very clear about that, but I still have to remember that God's radical compassion calls me, that we, even when I call people out for their failings, that they are still God's beloved. That's what I learned over these now 20 years of ministry, much of it when I was serving with you as a young, much younger priest. It is that recognition of Jesus going beyond his comfort zone into these areas of not only from the private to the public that Jesus shows his radical compassion. And here's the other piece of this radical compassion related to belovedness. Besides folks not being treated as beloved of God, besides some folks judging others as not beloved of God, perhaps the greatest tragedy is that Many people don't even believe that they themselves are beloved of God. That is why we need a month of compassion to remind us of our calling and help us to reflect God's love and compassion to those in such a situation. Now, as I said, the one of those who taught me so much about radical compassion, the radical compassion of Jesus was Dean Rowan Smith. And one of the things among the many that I remember is that at most liturgies, when Rowan needed to quote some scripture as an offertory sentence or as a greeting, he would go to the first verse of Psalm 115. Not unto us, O Lord, not unto us, but to thy name be the glory. And of course, that text goes on to say, for the sake of your steadfast love and your faithfulness. That steadfast love and faithfulness Jesus had not only to God the Father, but to us. That is the root of not only God's glory, but the root of God's true compassion. A compassion that we are privileged to behold and then to share with others. A privilege that we get to carry each other with God's love and God's compassion. And when we do so, we know what the meaning of true joy is. When we do so, we know what the meaning of true glory is. And so, beloved of God at St. George the Martyr, I leave you with these words. At that great and grand cathedral which is surpassed by the beauty of you, you, the people of the Cathedral of St. George the Martyr. I leave you with these words. Besides knowing that I and my family will always love you, more importantly, know that God loves you. And may God bless you. May God lead you. And may you always remain in the palm of God's loving hand. Amen. Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true 
God from two gods, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. In the name of God, who is creator, redeemer, and life giver, Amen. pray today for my Anglican site of prayer, the Anglican Church of Canada, and particularly for the Most Reverend Linda Nichols, Primate of the Anglican Church of Canada. We pray for Holy Trinity, for Wormsley, for the clergy, for the filling of a vacancy there. For the deacon, the Reverend Carol Sunley, we pray here in our own diocese for All Saints Rudeblom, the Reverend Melvin Boysens, who was the rector, and the people of God in that place. Lord, in your mercy, we give thanks for the message we received this morning from Father Walter. His message of radical compassion. We also give thanks for technology. How wondrous that we could have Father Walter preaching from us to us from the United States. So we also give thanks for Andile, who helps us with our technology going out to our virtual congregation. And we give thanks for the way that Father Walter brought us, brought to mind those years when he was here, and particularly for Dean Rowan and his ministry and what he taught us. We are asked to pray for Joan Coulson, for Walter Learning, and for Stephen Lindner. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for our nation and the nations of the world. We pray for Cyril our president, for Alan, our premier, for Dan, our mayor. We pray for all the leaders of this country. We also pray for all those who speak out and act against corruption often at great cost to themselves. 
And so we pray for the, your blessing and strengthening of all whistleblowers. We pray for the Zondo Commission and for Judge Zondo that he may be given the gift of guidance and wisdom in this significant week for the Commission. And we pray for your blessing on the meeting of the ruling party this weekend. And we pray that the forces of righteousness, of justice, of integrity may triumph. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the nations of the world, even as we pray for our own nation, praying for Dr. Zwilly M. Kieser, our Minister of Health. We pray for the coming of the vaccine, that it be, may be rolled out with fairness as well as with speed. We pray that we ourselves may, may grow in understanding. And we pray for the defeat of fake and false news. Lord, in your mercy. And we pray for the people of Myanmar as they come out night after night speaking out, demonstrating against the military takeover. We pray for the people of Tigray in Ethiopia who have suffered untold harm, killings, with the world hardly saying a word at a time when ancient mosques, ancient churches are being destroyed. We pray for the speaking out against injustice in that land. We pray for the people of Tigray at this time. Lord, in your mercy, We pray for the sick, those who are suffering from COVID-19, that even in isolation they may know your presence with them. We pray for doctors and nurses and all who continue to, to be on the front line, acting with kindness generosity and compassion, that they may feel your presence. We pray for all those who are lonely at this time, that they may feel comforted. Lord, in your mercy, We pray for the repose of the soul of Marianne Gruper, for her loved ones, for Father Carl and other members of the family. We give thanks for the life of Christopher Tobias. We pray for his family and also the family of the choir as they grieve for him and also celebrate the contribution he has made. We pray that today he rests and is part of the heavenly choir. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. And we bring before you God 
the prayers of our innermost hearts. And even as people around the world celebrate Valentine's Day, we give thanks for love. We give thanks for the ability to love and to be loved. And we give thanks for romance and what it brings to the human family, the way it inspires us, encourages us in the present and also gives us beautiful memories of the past. We pray also we bring before you, loving God, at this time our deepest fears as a human family and our vulnerability, our uncertainty, and also in our grief and in our sadness, in our doubt, our confusion, our vulnerability. But also today as we think of the healing of the leper, we think of the leper church on Robben Island and the lepers who were buried in the graveyard there, separated from their loved ones, praying that their souls may also rest in peace. All this we ask in the name of Jesus, who is our brother and our savior. Amen. Thank you, Father Michael, for reminding us about, or reminding me rather, about Valentine's Day and you in the congregation and wherever you are at the receiving end of life, you might have wondered, is there no love in this man's life? So may I repeat the sentiment and wish you all a most lovely, memory fold Valentine's Day and also for reminding us for some of us we have to dig very far back in memory but still romance is a lovely thing in fact I, I owe my wife still a proposal I was so in love I forgot when I went on bent knee and uh, asked for her hand in marriage but I'm working on it and I pray that all of you would have a most lovely Valentine, in, in whatever way you cho choose to celebrate it, may it be wonderful. I'm going to buy myself a, a, a coconut baked cake that you get at Woolies. And then tomorrow I'll eat, drink a lot of bitter oil just to deal with the diabetes. Friends, we also give thanks uh, for the safe return home of Dr. Walter Leaning. Uh, he returned home uh, in the course of a week ago. Uh, he was deemed well enough to leave the medic clinic. We also um, pray for traveling mercies for the Brownridge family as they leave the U.S. and head for Vermont. Oh, is Vermont in the U.S.? Oh, okay. Sorry, Vermont, for giving it to Canada. But just I think it's the northern part and the more cold part. And um, I think it'd be a very wonderful gift to the people of that diocese and to his beloved family. And then also please hold in prayer uh, Glenda and Luke Volskett as they consider uh, downsizing. And we know what it means to leave a place of much memory to pack and repack. So we wish them well. Please stand. May the peace of the Lord be with you.
not working. the third Eucharistic prayer. So remind you that our As Wednesday services are on the Facebook page and it's also on the Pew Leaflet. It's 10 o'clock and then 5 plus 1 where Archbishop Tabo will be presiding and preaching and then in the evening at 6.30. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this prayer to offer which earth has given and human hands have made, for us it becomes the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness. We have this wine to offer fruits of the vine and work of human hands, for us it becomes the cup of salvation. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. 
Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Vader, dit is ons plag en ons heil om u altijd en ooral te dank dier die geliefde Seen Jesus Christus. Hy is die woord die we u die Heer al gemaakt het, die verlosse wat u gestuur het om ons te red. En dier die kracht van die Heilige Geest het hy vrees geword en is geboren uit die macht Maria. De wille van ons het hy sy arms aan die kruis uitgestrek. Hy het die dood tot niet gemaakt en die opstanding geopenbaar, hier dier het hy u wil volbring, en vir u een heilige volk verwerf. And so we join the angels and the saints in proclaiming your glory as we sing. Wa <laughs> Wa bulele kuwe, wa si kweke za isonka, wa si nikela kubafundi baki ya siti, tabata ni nonke nitle, logo mzima wamu, oyaku nikelelu wa nina. Wati kwango kunjala wewe kwe sitlo sango kutwa watabata indebe. Wabuya wabulele kuwe kubonga. Waye nikela indebe kubafundi bake ya siti. Tabata ni nisela kuyanonke. Le indebe igazi lam. Igazi lo ngopiso omcha. Oguna pakadi. Lona liya kupalela nina na babonke ukuze kubonga. Kolelwa izono, oku kwe nzeleni, oku dikumbula. And so we proclaim the mystery of faith. of his death and resurrection we offer you father this life giving bread the saving cup we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you may all of us who share in the body and blood of Christ be brought together in unity by the Holy Spirit Lord remember your church throughout the world and make us grow in love together with Joshua and Tabo and all the clergy. Remember Mary Ann and Christopher and all those who have passed on this time from COVID and all our brothers and sisters who have gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all, 
make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with the apostles and with all the saints who have done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son, Jesus Christ, and through him and with him in the unity of the Holy Spirit. O oh, glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. So as Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, bread which we break is not a sharing of the body of Christ. Beloved, draw near and receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Behold who we are.
Oh, we give thanks unto the Lord, for God is gracious. Father Almighty, we offer ourselves to you as a living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Send us out into the world in the power of the Holy Spirit to love and work to your praise and glory. So the peace of God which passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Forget not to pray for millions of our children. 
returning to school tomorrow and for the educators that they may be kept safe. The Mass is ended. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.